So, um, funny story, because I technically only have 10 minutes to record with this software, I did not have enough time to fully explain why you cannot place a chlorine atom over here uh, during chlorination. Um, for one, this would violate the octet rule. But now someone might say, um, if you're very careful with drawing out these structures, uh, actually, let's go up here. Let's zoom into this carbon up here. Because actually what's going on here is this is a carbon and there are three hydrogens bonded to it. And if you're really going to think about it, you might say, well, we can't add a chlorine here. This would also violate the octet rule. This carbon would form five bonds. Um, so why is it that we can put a chlorine here, but not here? And the answer is we're not actually adding a chlorine uh, as a fifth bond, we're using a chlorine to displace a hydrogen. Uh, this will not work on this carbon-carbon uh, bonding. We're going to see why. Uh, and to see why exactly, we need to understand that we're not actually starting off with a chlorine radical. For a reaction like this, we would actually start off with uh, the chlorine molecule. So uh, chlorine is uh, chlorine molecules are going to be two chlorine atoms bonded together. Uh, remember Honkel Griff. These are your diatomics. Honkel Griff. Uh, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and fluorine. These are going to exist in a uh, diatomic form. And uh, to understand what's actually happening, let's draw out the Lewis structure for this. Uh, ooh, that's a carbon, not chlorine. Okay, Lewis structure, da, 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 da. Now, this is actually what we're going to be adding into our, uh, I don't know, I don't want to, what do you want to say, your mixture in order to perform this reaction. You're going to be adding this chlorine molecule. And what's going to happen is actually in the lab, you're going to shine a light, and that light is going to break this carbon-carbin bond. Uh, did I say carbon-carbin? Chlorine-chlorine bond. Remember that bonds, covalent bonds, are two electrons shared, an electron pair that is shared. And so if we break it apart, what can happen, not what will always happen, but what can happen is one electron will go to this chlorine, we denote that with a fish hook arrow, and one electron can go to this chlorine. Uh, and we would get from this the chlorine radical and that's what's actually happening here this is where we get this i kind of skipped this in the first video because uh again time limit but that's actually how we're getting this chlorine so we're getting two chlorine atoms actually uh okay so that's that uh let's move let's draw a chlorine radical up here okay so what's going to happen here is uh, we have to go back a, quite a bit to understanding how covalent bonds work. So in covalent bonds, electrons are shared between atoms, okay? But they are not always going to be shared equally. So in this chlorine-chlorine case, they're going to be shared equally because we have two atoms of equal atomic number. But in the case of something like, let's say, uh, hydrogen and carbon, well, this carbon is going to be much more electronegative than hydrogen. It's because this carbon has, actually because it has more electrons and electron, uh, more, I'm sorry, more protons and more orbitals to fill. And so more, it is more likely that the electrons will cluster around this carbon. And we would denote that with an arrow, if you remember from uh, chem, well, gem chem, I guess, or chem honors, and I'm sorry, chem one. And so an elect the electrons would be going towards carbon, and we would denote the hydrogen with a like a mini positive sign at the end of this dipole. Oh, that's not the eraser. And so what we can say is that this hydrogen is almost deprived of electrons, or this hydrogen as well, all of these hydrogens, 
And so we can call these hydrogens electrophilic. They want electrons almost. They don't literally want electrons, but there are the electrons that are shared in this hydrogen carbon bond are clustered around this carbon. And so this hydrogen would actually be more stable if it can get an electron and this chlorine happens to have a free electron. So what's going to happen here is actually there are two chlorines. There are two of them. And let's, uh, I, I like to denote electron pushing with red. So what's going to happen is that using this radical, using this radical, this is like the, I don't know, this is like Spider-Man shooting a web. It's going to target this electrophilic hydrogen. So, okay. And it is going, this, remember, this bond is two electrons. This is an electron pair, and they can move in different directions, as we saw with this fluorine chlorine example. And so one electron will go to this hydrogen, and one will stay with the carbon. And so what we're going to get here, uh, that's wrong arrow, very big mistake, actually. I just made a big mistake, uh, is... we're going to get uh, a carbon with a free radical, okay? And what's going to happen to this hydrogen up here? Well, uh, let me erase this over here. This is no longer necessary. Is it's going to form hydrochloric acid, HCl. This is gonna form a um, hydrogen chlorine bond using these two electrons. Now, uh, this carbon needs to stabilize itself by getting another electron. And remember we formed two chlorines, two chlorine atoms. And so now this can be fixed by bringing this electron, this radical, onto the carbon. Oh, that should be a fish arrow. Again, big mistake. But what's going to happen is because now there are two electrons shared between the carbon and the chlorine, okay, what we're actually going to get is a carbon-chlorine bond. Or if we were to simplify it, it would look like this because we don't need to include the hydrogens in line angle structures. This is not going to happen on the carbon-carbon bond because um, on this carbon-carbon bond, right over here, you're not really going to have, on this carbon rather, you're not going to have any place for this chlorine to attack. You can try to draw it out yourself, see what free electrons are around here for the chlorine to attack. It's not going to work. There's not going to be any electrophilic species like the hydrogen here. Um, there's nowhere for the chlorine to attack. And so uh, you will not be able to form, this is illegal, you will not be able to form a chlorine here to violate the octet rule on carbon, on a carbon-carbon bond, rather. So yeah, just be very careful when drawing out your possible products from a reaction. But if you wanted an intuitive understanding of why the chlorine can attack the carbon-hydrogen bond, um, you need to understand this, these steps of, um, we, we call this a proton transfer because the hydrogen, the proton, is transferring over to a chlorine to form HCl.